Hey guys, Evan here, bringing you a brief episode zero summary of the show Avatar The Last Airbender. Why am I doing this? Well, after four years, I have finally decided to throw my hat into the ring and join my friends in reviewing this series. I will be joining them for book three, Fire, and covering it episode by episode as we often do. Now, my experience with this show was, as I imagine, similar to many. I watched it when it originally aired on Nickelodeon back in the day, and again, like most people, I absolutely loved it. While I wouldn't necessarily consider myself a quote-unquote hardcore fan of the series, as my only real experience with it was, well, the last Airbender series, or Legend of Aang, as it is sometimes called, I have not read any of the books, I haven't read any of the comics, and I've only seen a little bit of Legend of Korra, but hopefully that will change in the coming months because I really am looking forward to getting back into the series and learning things that I did not know previously. I always felt that one of the greatest strengths of the series overall was its characters and their interactions. This was really one of the few shows I saw, especially growing up at the time, where I really felt like these were real people in real situations. They felt human, well, to the point, obviously, not everything is realistic, of course, but there was just this layer of humanity with all of the characters, you know, Aang, Katara, Sokka, Zuko, all of them, that just made it feel so much more immersive, and it just really made the experience so much more impactful to me personally. And that's not to say that the show doesn't have other elements I love. I mean, the animation is still stellar to this day, and the music absolutely cannot be ignored. But to me, the biggest strength of this series will always be the characterization. As far as my opinions on the previous two books, book one, again, like with many opening seasons, does a really good job of establishing the world, the characters, as well as sort of slowly immersing you into the lore in a way that makes sense. Obviously, there are a few elements of book one that the writers really didn't know what they were fully going for at first, and you could see that, especially in the first few episodes and how characters are portrayed. But at the same time, by the end of it, you do get a really good idea of where the series is going, as well as the stakes of the war itself. Uh, my favorite episode of book one is, of course, Blue Spirit. I know, cliched answer, but I just love the subtlety of that episode, specifically in the fact that it really kind of opens the door for the, not, not so much, well, yes, in many ways you could say it really opens the door for Aang and Zuko's relationship specifically, but at the same time, it really opens up a lot of questions in the mind about the relationship between, you know, friend and foe and how those worlds can intersect in certain situations. So I like that. Book two is definitely where I felt things really came to a head, at least in the sense of I finally started to believe that this series was truly set in what it wanted to do, set in stone, you could say, which is ironic considering the Earth title, of course. But again, I just loved the fact that they were able to take what elements worked in book one and incorporate them in a way it, that really felt real. Again, this world finally felt big to me in the sense of I really felt the stakes of the war and the suffering that a lot of people are going through, both from the various kingdoms. And again, I thought that is done excellently. And of course, the spirituality side of things is heavily explored in book two, particularly with episodes like, you know, The Guru and, of course, Crossroads of Destiny, which, again, are absolutely excellent pieces of animation. I recommend anyone just watch those episodes, even if you're not a fan of the series, because it just touches on so many interesting elements that could be woven into everyday life. So I like that. But that being said, my favorite episode of book two will always be The Blind Bandit. Again, cliched, but if there's kind of if an episode is beloved by so many people, there's usually a reason for it. Toph, one of my favorite characters in the series, excellent introduction, excellent story. And again, every scene she's in from then on is just absolute gold, completely memorable. And I just loved see seeing her every time. As for book three, well, like I said, you'll have to wait on that. But you'll see it soon. As for which element I personally align with, I thought long and hard about this one, and even my friends were having some issue pinning this down for me, because I honestly feel like my own personal sort of personality type kind of takes elements from all four, but at the end of the day, I'm ultimately going to settle on water, because that's what I feel like I'm most closely aligned with. Now, in terms of philosophy, I've always kind of tried to build myself as the kind of person who, you know, for lack of a better term, goes with the flow of things in terms of my relationship to the universe around me. I'm always trying my best to sort of see every side of a situation and sort of 
flow, maybe not so much around it or maybe even through it, depending on the situation, but just sort of to alter myself to better understand the situations I'm in in order to come to the most peaceful resolution possible. Also, I'm very big on family ties and the tribal nature of the water tribe is, of course, a big element of their philosophy. So I really much enjoy that. And as for the actual element itself, one thing that always really uh, fascinated me about water in particular compared to others in the series was just the sheer amount of versatility that can be done with it. You know, I, of course, you know, the big waves and the water whips, that's all great. But again, you could do things like healing, blood bending, ice manipulation. It just makes for some amazing and creative fights and some absolutely stellar animation moments. So that's really what I ultimately am drawn to when it comes to the elemental natures. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this brief Episode Zero cover of Avatar The Last Airbender. Hope you're looking forward to our reviews of Book 3. I know I definitely am, and I'll see you guys later.